My name is Jen Silva. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'm from the Office of Alumni Engagement. And on behalf of our office, as well as Stonehill Athletics, I would like to thank you for joining us today for our second edition of Coffee with the Coaches. Before we get underway, just a few logistics for today's event. If everybody could please type their full name, the location from which you're joining us today, and then just let us know whether you're an alum, a student, or a current parent. If you could put that in the chat box, that would be great. That will help us to in. Uh, we will keep all microphones muted throughout the, um, the primary part of the discussion, but please feel free to chat in any questions that you have, and we'll be sure that they get answered um, in the order that they're chatted in. And without further ado, I would like to pass the microphone over to Assistant Director of Athletics and our moderator today, Doug Monson. Great. Thank you, Jen. Um, welcome, everybody, and we're you know happy to have um, our women's soccer family here with us today um, for the today's Coffee with the Coaches. Hopefully you guys enjoy uh, the next few minutes with us to learn a little bit about the program and uh, kind of what, what's going on with them right now, certainly during these uh, interesting times. But um, without further ado, I'd like to just introduce our head coach, Alex Wilson. Um, Alex is an alum. We can talk about that later uh, in her eighth season as head coach of the women's soccer program. Um, she has led the Skyhawks to their first three NCAA tournament bids, including the last two years. Um, the Skyhawks last year earned their first NCAA tournament win with a 2-1 win over Jefferson. And she is a two-time NE10 Coach of the Year. So uh, without further ado, Alex, um, welcome. Thanks, Doug. Uh, thanks, everyone. Happy to be here, uh, obviously representing Stonehill and our women's soccer program. I'm just super excited to continue to get to know all of our, our fans, our family, our alums. Um, talk a little bit about what we're doing now. Um, very fortunate to be joined by our senior captain, Tess Irwin. She's from Walpole, uh, Massachusetts. And Tess has been a, a staple on the field for us since her freshman year. Since then, she's been a two-time uh, first-team All-Conference, two-time WISA All-New England, and a two-time um, formerly NSCAA, now United Soccer Coaches, first-team All-Region um, as a center back for us. And Again, just thrilled to have her here. So I know she'll be able to lend some insight on her experiences throughout the call. So thanks again, Tess. Coach, just take us through, uh, obviously, certainly an interesting time. That's a Friday and the, towards the end of October when, you know, I'm sure you'd be scouting tomorrow's opponent and whatnot. But uh, obviously that's not the case. But take us through what kind of it's like with the team right now going through this fall with uh, the team activities that you're able to do. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, I think certainly a different time as we've all experienced over the last you know, seven to eight months shifts in our personal lives and our professional lives. Uh, we found out in mid-July that we wouldn't be having a competitive season and, you know, definitely shed some tears. I think I was the first one on the team Zoom. Um, but since we've been back, we've been progressing through our, our phase system of, you know, small group training into a little bit uh, bigger groups. And now we're in, in groups of 10 and working in those pods. And honestly, as the easy route would be just to complain about what we can't do, the group has been phenomenal and just being positive and focusing on what we can do. And that is, you know, we, even with the masks on, you can tell that they're smiling, they're enjoying it, and they're working hard and competing. Um, obviously modifying some of the technical and tactical work that we do because of the group size and because of some of the distancing restrictions. Uh, it's still been an absolute joy to be out there every day, you know, enjoying some of this uh, warm weather, even into late October, and just finding reasons to compete, you know, amongst ourselves and remaining competitive and, and keeping score in all of our activities really allows us to, you know, be rewarded, which is what we miss when we don't have those game days is, is how that our hard work daily, you know, rewards us in those moments, but uh, we're certainly finding those um, every day in what we do in, in the weight room and, and on the practice field. Uh, Tess, if you wouldn't mind giving us your perspective can you, and maybe even explain a little bit more what your guys are able to do on the field with, with your activities in the weight room and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so like Coach said, when we found out um, over the summer that our season was postponed and we'd be practicing with masks, um, we were all kind of like, no way. Like, I don't know, like it was kind of like almost taking a step back. Um, but when we showed up to campus, we were all positive and ready to go. We quickly adjusted to the situation and the protocols that were implemented. Um, and like coach said, everyone's been very positive through it all. Um, so that definitely helps. Um, so 
kind of like a typical week is we have four practices an hour each. Um, we have three of which are as a team. The other day we go into the weight room on our own, um, all with masks. And for the varsity weight room, if you do go on your own, you have to sign up online through Sign Up Genius. Um, so that's all easy to do. Everything's organized, all socially distant um, in the weight room and practice. Um, you have to like sanitize everything, but they're good about doing that too. Um, and kind of like, because of the whole socially distant thing, we can't typically do our normal team bonding and team chemistry. But I think because those off the field activities are kind of like restricted. I think when we come together on the field and even in the weight room, it can really, we really make the most of it because we know it's like kind of all that we get together. So I think definitely being positive and making the most of it is helping. Great, thanks. Um, Alex, uh, you're one of a handful of alumni coaches on our coaching staff. Um, Talk about that perspective that you bring as you know someone who attended Stonehill. Um, obviously, you're also led by our athletic director, who is an alum. Um, just talk about that ability to kind of you know that inside cell of, of of your program, but also the college. I think as we even preach to our prospective student athletes, it's about the school first. The school is the staple. The school is the constant. And even though Stonehill as an institution grows and evolves it will be you know, at its core, that community-based institution that focuses on academics with the bonus of being able to be a student athlete at you know, what I consider one of the most competitive women's soccer conferences in the country. And you know, we preach that ideal every day. I know my goal, having experienced that here myself some time ago was to come back and bring that experience to our student athletes, but how do we make it better? I never got to compete in the NCAAs and now having done it uh, for them as a coach three of the last four years as Tess and then anyone will tell you it's a dream it, to be able to go out there and just know that you're one of 56 teams down from I don't know about 238 ish uh, division two women's soccer teams in the country uh, to be able to do that uh, and represent Stonehill and have that on our chest um, that's what makes me happy every day I get to pull on many of our gear items and uh, it's really just a prideful moment not only as an alum but now to be guiding these women towards joining that family, you know, after their four year careers are done here. Great coach, uh, you kind of segued into it. Talk about um, the season you guys had last year, building into this year, um, 12 wins, a second straight NCAA bid, your third in four years or, or so, and mm -hmm. also won a any 10 championship recently. Um, just talk about, what you had coming back and, you know, that, and, and building off of last year. Yeah, 2019 was another special year. Uh, we've made history with the first win um, for a soccer program in Stonehill's um, history. Uh, and that's for us since 1977 was kind of the first varsity year for women's soccer. So to come out and uh, again, our, our third appearance there. So we were hungry for it. And to, it was kind of refreshing to get Jefferson, because as everybody knows, when you get to the NCAAs, it's like, oh, hey, to a Northeast 10 team, um, you know, everybody's really talented and you likely run into another conference opponent um, in the early rounds. So to be able to see someone new, I think we weren't overthinking it. We prepared well and we went in and, and got the win. And it was just a great group of women and having graduated five seniors, um, you know, who obviously brought a lot to the program, but we returned 21 um, to this year's squad and even though we're not going to be able to compete for the NCAAs this year, one of the great things is that expectation, that standard is so intrinsic now to the players that the freshmen come in. And before I even open my mouth about what we are about, the players are doing it and they're saying, Oh, well, you know, we're a postseason team. We work hard and, you know, focus on every day, but here's our big picture goals. And then watch me to see how we do it every day to get there. And I think that that speaks to our cultural aspect. Uh, and then obviously the X's and O's we continue to work on and develop every year. And we've just been able to develop a style of play on both sides of the ball that, you know, it's hard to compete against. And I think the biggest thing is the spirit though. These players want to compete. They want to win and represent Stonehill really well. So 
even though there's no, as I said, NCAA championship, uh, you know, if we get the ability to compete this year in the spring, then, you know, we're certainly looking to bring home an, another NE10 championship. It's been a, a couple of years since 2016. And, and again, the players know that and they're hungry for it. So. Tess, can you just expand a little bit on the coach coach talked about uh, culture? What, what does that mean to you? What, what has it been kind of, you know, what has she built here culture wise that your seniors before you have probably instilled on you that you now look to, you know, get into those younger players that she talked about? Yeah, so culture is a big part of our team, um, even coming in as a freshman. I could always see how close the team was on and off the field. Um, and kind of like coach said, making history last year, kind of it like really raised the bar for us. Like every time we step on the field, we were pushing ourselves to kind of like keep that standard and keep raising the bar to reach that. Um, and like you can see the energy carried over from last season to now, like despite we don't have um, NCAAs to strive for, we still hopefully um, have a spring season. So we're still pushing ourselves to kind of like achieve those goals that we want to reach um, in the spring. And kind of like culture, like I mentioned before, um, stepping onto the field is a big part of achieving such a strong community um, within the team because we can't necessarily get that off the field. So when we come together, you can see how like, close everyone is. And it definitely helps with having small practices now um, because you get to, because you're only engaged with like 10 people on your team, you could really get to know those um, individuals more than you really could with a full practice. So culture is like a big part of what we focus on and it's always something we're striving to get better. Coach, obviously Tess is one of those returning players you had coming back from that team. Can you just talk a little bit more about, you know, some of those key members you have back on your team this year from the last couple of seasons? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, from, from the last year, everybody really had an important role. And I think that's one of the things, again, back to our culture, you know, looking at our team handbook on the first page, it says, you know, embrace your role, work hard, be ready. And we really try and, and harness that a lot because everyone's role is different, um, but equal in their importance to the development of the season. And then obviously, you know, the legacy that that class or individual is going to leave behind. Uh, we do return a couple of our leading scorers in, in Kayla Henry and Alex Giardina uh, and Emma Slade, um, who came in uh, as, as a freshman and, and, and really, you know, had a good hold in the midfield there and was able to impact on both sides of the ball. Uh, Cameron Thompson, again, in our top four in scoring there. She had a, a, another good year after being the rookie of the year uh, as a freshman. And, you know, across the back line, you know, we graduated a couple players from there, but really looking to Tessa's leadership as a returning center back to, you know, grab hold of our other impact players and develop them. And then obviously at the goalkeeper position, having graduated Caitlin Brown, we're going to be looking to a new face uh, of our three keepers currently to step in there and, and take hold and, um, you know, not only save the ball, uh, fingers crossed, but uh, to continue to lead, you know, a, a defensive unit uh, because we've been tops in those statistical categories through the, uh, through the last couple of years. Great. Um, how about some of those new players and, and just talk about the ability you know, if there is a bright spot about not having a season that those, you know, those new players get to come in and, and get their feet wet at a probably a less um, brisk pace with your system and kind of, you know, work with the team a little bit more before you guys hit the field. Yeah, absolutely. We've got eight freshmen here and just very excited for their impact. Uh, several of them are familiar with one another. We have uh, two teammates. Uh, we have some from the same club organization. Um, that have played together. So that familiarity, which is one of the biggest things we try and grow in a preseason period is already there for some of them. And I think that, you know, they'll certainly impact all over the pitch. Again, we have keepers, we've got uh, players in the back line through the midfield and, and those that are looking to be goal scorers for us or playmakers up top. Um, I think their development so far has been excellent. You know, a little quiet at first, trying to figure out, you know, the ebbs and flows, I think. Uh, but now that we're in the bigger groups, they're able to, to chirp and chime in. And, and as we get into live play a bit more, it's fun to see their personality on the ball um, and continue to kind of delve into where they're going to fit 
uh, into our lineups and, and whatever role they're going to play on the team. But they're a great group. They're eager. I think they don't know what it was like before, so they don't really have anything to compare it to. And I know that they've the feedback we've received from them, like, oh, it's great. It's great. You know, they're happy to be here. They're happy to be playing at a high level with and getting to know their teammates. Um, and it's fun meeting with them and having them, you know, chirp on the returning players like, oh, I like, you know, what Tess does or I like what Emma does or, you know, whoever they throw out there, they've pick and pick and choose everybody. Um, but it just means I think our expectation is going to be a bit higher of them as well once we get into the playing because, you know, they've had months versus two and a half weeks, which is usually what they get before they're getting real game time. So now we're going to continue to raise that bar and look for, you know, from a stylistic standpoint that they're understanding of their uh, roles uh, and the expectations that we put on them uh, are going to be clearly understood. Now, obviously, there's always room for, you know, chopping and changing, but I think that they should have a good understanding of our expectations when we get into hopefully some gameplay in the spring. Right. Tess, what's life like on campus right now? Can you, you know, not just, you know, soccer related, but, you know, um, you know, just how, how life is around campus during this uh, interesting time? So I'd say it's more quiet now than it was before. Um, and even just like walking around, like you always need a mask. So it's kind of just like become like the new normal. Um, which I think is like so weird to think about how last year we were just like walking around campus like you can actually see who someone was but now it's like if you have to do a double take um, and for classes they are online and in person for me personally I have two in person and three online um, and the in-person classes everything is socially distanced like the desks are six feet apart, professors wear their masks. Um, the library, um, that's all socially distanced. Everything academically, they're doing a great job for keeping students like engaged, but also keeping the protocols in line. And then for the food, for like the dining, most of the food is online. You'll have to like order ahead of time. So for Gigi's um, in the business building, um, Aubon Pan and even the Hill, you have to order all those online. Um, the commons, you can go in and order, but you can also do that online. And even the calf, um, you can still eat there, but everything is socially distanced um, six feet. And they say two people per table. Um, so that was like another really thing that's like changed because my friends and I, we would all go to dinner and like just eat together and the cab would be filled with people. Um, but that's definitely changed now. Not a lot of people eat there. Um, so team dinners is something we would do too. But now that was kind of taken away. But we'll figure something out. I was going to say team dinners are usually women's soccer and, and food uh, are, are synonymous. And, you know, it's hard not to have that kind of social connection because I know after practice, if I'm a few minutes late getting them out of there, like, come on, coach, you know, we're hungry. We want to get up there for our team dinner. And I think that, you know, to Tessa's point earlier about using the bonding time at, at practice, we've certainly tried to work that in and um, maybe we'll bring some snacks for Halloween. <laughs> coach, you've started a new program here. It kind of, you have a number of off-campus things you guys are involved in, but um, a new mentorship program. And, and I think maybe with the alumni here today, um, might be hearing about this for the first time. Can you just talk about that and, and kind of what your philosophy with it is? Thanks, Doug. So a few weeks ago, we did uh, a probably smaller scale uh, women's athletic alumni panel with a lot of the female sports here. And um, Coach Hansbury of our field hockey program kind of initiated that. We had a couple of alums on from different programs, basketball, field hockey, lacrosse, track and field, volleyball, and us. It was a lot of fun and it was just really intriguing to hear what all the alums are involved in especially connecting it to what our players are interested in and so I went through our team and I collected all of their you know academic data what they're studying you know what their major minor um, where they're from you know sometimes they want to stay in the area that they are, are local to and then also any internship objectives and career objectives and interests some of them aren't quite sure yet and obviously that's totally fine um, so we created that database and then we've sent it out to our alums and hopefully just to connect. We've heard a couple of things back. We have a lot of that are in health sciences and looking into PA school and we have 
uh, several alums that have already reached back out saying, yes, let's connect, connect me with your players. A couple that are teachers, we have some that are interested in education as well. So I think that in this challenging time of, you know, the job market and just kind of connecting with people, I think it may be a good opportunity for our players, whether it's through Zoom, a phone call, uh, hey, call me when you graduate in X years. I think those are really good um, connections that we can make because everyone knows someone that went to Stonehill that loves Stonehill. And I think the fact that, you know, we have over 200 women soccer alums and as one myself, I want to continue to build that bond for our current players and future players because, uh, you know, it's, it's a special breed, the Stonehill women soccer player. So I think having those connections once we join that alum family would be important for our players now and into the future. Great. Uh, Tess, uh, another program you guys are involved in is uh, Team Impact. Can you just talk about that a little bit and, um, you know, talk about your Team Impact teammate and, and how that is, um, you know, been a good experience for, for you guys? So we're partnered with um, a girl named Alana. She's been with us since, I want to say my sophomore year. Um, and she would come to our games in a traditional season, um, some practices. We would try to get her involved as much as we can. Um, I know recently we put together a gift basket that we will be sending her for kind of Halloween and just something nice to do during um, pandem the pandemic. Um, and I know I think they're doing a Halloween costume with all the Team Impact players over Zoom. Um, so that'll be something coming up to kind of keep them involved in all of the teams because I know it's hard for them to kind of like come to campus and it's hard for us to do like activities with her. Um, but I think the gift basket is um, a good way to like reach out. Right, Coach, can you just, you know, expand on that a little bit, you know, from your perspective being involved with Team Impact and what are some other organizations that you guys are, you know, are able to help out with? The Team Impact has been amazing. Alana signed with us, you know, we set up uh, a whole signing day just as our, you know, commits do before they come in freshman year. And it was amazing. And I think, you know, tying in again to our culture piece, one of the first big bold words on our team handbook is, you know, what a privilege uh, this is to be able to, you know, be a student athlete and competing at this level. And, and you know, Alana um, may not be able to, to do that from a competitive standpoint, you know, because of her illness. And you'd never know it. When she comes here, smiley, just amazing um, young lady. And we made bracelets the first time. She definitely showed me how to do some bracelets. I don't even, I can barely do a braid. So uh, that was nice to learn some of those skills. And again, to return some of the skills that our players have to her, because it's certainly, I think when you think of team impact or you think of relationships as such that it's, oh, you know, we give everything to our team impact teammate. And that's not true. It, it's uh, absolutely uh, mutually beneficial. And, you know, the insight and just the pure joy, right? I know she came to our alumni game a couple of years ago and she scored on assistant coach Block, who, you know, is obviously an All-American goalkeeper for us here. And uh, I think, I don't think Jamie went easy on her. I think uh, Alana dribbled right down the field and, and put one or maybe two in the back of the goal. So I think just seeing the, sh the sheer joy, you know, that's obviously why we start playing this game. And I think for our players, it's why they're here continuing it because they still find that happiness in it. So it's nice to, to get that from a teammate um, and see that that carries whether you're nine or, or 19 and, you know, they, to have those feelings about the game is important. Another organization you help out with is uh, the Brockton Youth Clinic. Uh, just talk about your relationship with them. Yeah, so the Brockton Little Angels, uh, they've been with us since my first year. They were U9, and some of them just signed up for our clinic as high school freshmen. So it's kind of crazy, um, but they're an absolutely wonderful group of young soccer players that, you know, again, when they first came, they're, you know, hip height and, and running out onto the field, asking their mom and dad if they can go out and get our autographs after the game, which was just uh, amazing. And we actually started having them come in the spring and they would do, we would do a joint practice. And their first question is, do you recruit in Brockton? Do you recruit in Stoughton? Do you recruit locally? Uh, 
Yes. So I think, you know, we, we obviously stress the importance of the academic piece. We always talk about academics and how that's, that is the, the key to many gateways. And I think that they've really bought into that. And now that they're doing the, the town with Brockton, you know, a lot of them are doing some of the bigger clubs as well and staying involved. And that's just been a constant every single year. We can count on them coming to a game, sitting front row, making signs, cheering, and um, then, you know, coming on and saying, you know, where's number 13? That's Tessa's number, uh, you know, looking for Tess or looking for any of the players and just wanting, you know, their, their autograph. And uh, trust me, our players enjoy it just as much. And, and it's, again, nice to just have that bond and to have that consistency um, that these players that have been here for, you know, seven, eight years is uh, really special. Great. I just want to interject that, you know, we feel free to, you know, ask any you know, questions through the chat at any time. Um, you know, we'll get to them as we go through here. Um, so don't hold back. Let, if you have a question, feel free to enter it at any time into the chat. Um, Coach, you talked about academics. Talk about, you know, that value you have with your team and your student athletes. And uh, obviously, they're, you know, they're not here to just play soccer. They're here to go to class as well. And, you know, you, you guys, your, your team does it better than – than a lot of them. So just <laughs> talk about your uh, academic side. I appreciate that. Yeah, the academics, it honestly blows me away. Um, what these players uh, are interested in, what they're doing, you know, picking up extra minors, doing double majors, doing internships. Um, it's just, it's absolutely wild. And, and they seem they do it with ease. You know, obviously we all have our moments of help, um, but that's why, you know, the resources here are so great. And I think I just did the cumulative GPA uh, shout out to Kit for helping me get those numbers. Uh, over the last five seasons, we have a cumulative GPA average of a 3.43. Um, last spring, we ended with a 3.7. Um, despite all the challenges, obviously remote learning was, uh, let's see, uh, we, we got into it. Uh, again, remote learning for the first time for a lot of people, uh, I think obviously in a traditional face-to-face -face campus, uh, but they did super well with that and were able to use their resources and work from home, which can, as we all know, have a lot of distractions. Um, we've had numerous players earn academic all conference, which is not easy uh, to get. And I think last year we had two in Emily Rosano and Caitlin Brown. Um, so obviously measuring their impact as soccer players, but then, you know, with their impact as academics as well. And I think that when you look through our team, just the variety of what they're studying and their different pursuits uh, allows them to enlighten one another, but also help one another when there's a common study. You know, we've got upperclassmen that are helping some of our underclassmen because they've been through that course before. Um, we did win the Bertucci's uh, dinner uh, last year for the biggest bump uh, in GPA. So that was fun to, to go get some chicken parm and pasta with Cindy Mack as always. Great test. Talk about from a, your, your student athlete perspective, you know, the focus that you guys have to have as, uh, you know, student athletes here on the academic side and maybe talk about a little bit your academic background as, as a psych major and, uh, and, and what your plans are for down the road. Yeah, so we always say like academics before athlete, um, which I think is a big part of kind of what coach was talking about, how like 3.7 GPA in the spring kind of like really shows how much we honor um, the academic side of why we're here um, and kind of going off what she was saying about resources as a team. The team is a great academic resource. Um, there's a lot of variety in different majors and minors. Like I'll still reach out to um, previous teammates that have already graduated and kind of like ask about um, a professor they had or a class they took for psychology just for some advice um, and even some underclassmen on the team now will come to me and ask about um, different psychology courses um, kind of like what to take um, and also I'm a sports commerce and culture minor so they asked me about that too um, so plans down the road <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm really interested in like mental health. Um, so like therapy or counseling, something like that. Um, I don't know if I want to go to grad school right away, but still trying to figure that out. You've got a little time, so yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot with that. No. Um, <laughs> Coach, talk about the recruiting process for you guys right now. Um, you know, 
I'm not sure how many games you're able to get out to or see you know, what's going on, you know, in, in the world, but just explain that and, uh, you know, kind of where you guys are, you know, obviously getting ready for the next class. Yeah, the 2021 class, obviously, you know, women's soccer is pretty ahead, if you will, in, in the recruiting right now would be typically the high school juniors, you know, that we're communicating with and evaluating, but obviously with everything being slowed down since March, I think it was like March 3rd and 4th, the GPS weekend, we went out recruiting, like, all right, cool. And then it went dark for a couple months. And so, you know, we were able to have four commitments. Um, but, you know, we're obviously, you know, looking to bring in more and we have two clinics coming up, which was really thankful that we were able to host uh, offsite at, at Union Point. And obviously going with all the COVID uh, protocols and regulations, uh, we've, you know, secured a lot of talented uh, prospective student athletes to come out for that to, to look to finish off our 2021 class and then obviously uh, start to get good looks at 22s, 23s. There's a couple 20, 24s and 5s signed up as well. Um, but, so, but we're excited for that. It has been a challenge. You know, we're lucky where we can recruit um, on and off campus now, obviously with very diligently scheduled on-campus visits through our visitor protocol. And then going to high school games is just a challenge right now because of the mass uh, if they're in Massachusetts, which primarily is where we're going locally right now, but because of all the rules, uh, you know, no throw-ins, no heading the ball, uh, no direct corner kicks, no attacking corner kicks. Everything has to be kicked in on the floor. Very different. Uh, a lot of whistles, but, you know, so I think for players that thrive off maybe an aerial presence or a physical game, you know, it's hard to kind of get that true evaluation of them. So hopefully, you know, they can be patient and we can be patient and look for our opportunities because I think, as nervous as the high school seniors are, you know, we are too. So I think it's just understanding that we're all on the same plane and then, you know, doing our due diligence to keep an open timeline and, you know, work best with each individual. Great. Well, I mean, if anybody has any questions, I would ask, you know, feel free to ask away at this, at this time. Um, we got, we got a few more minutes if you'd like. It's the magic question. Just, Coach, what are you guys preparing for for a spring season? And you know, uh, you know, Sharon Moore asked, "Do you think there'll be a spring season?" And and there's a secondary question: When would that start? So, can you just maybe talk about where things are with preparing for spring, um, as the NE10 is at this point? Yeah, absolutely. So the NE10 is definitely preparing uh, for a spring season, and you know, we've been given some details about obviously an, an early start in the spring semester, you know, looking to start training once we get back late January, early February, uh, and hopefully having some games uh, start probably around March. We're just, you know, we're not really hundred percent sure. I don't know the schedule yet, but I know that we're all planning, um, you know, working on our practice times here already and working with the other programs to all fit on our turf field and, and make that work, which I, I'm confident that we will do that. And you are preparing, you know, physically and mentally for a spring season. We're going to remain optimistic that that can happen. And, and I know they're planning for, you know, a traditional postseason as well um, for the top um, eight teams to qualify and go from there. Again, everything is always a bit dynamic and certainly has ability to, to change, but that's what we're preparing for uh, a Northeast 10 only kind of season. And, and then a postseason, you know, we'd love to, to raise that conference championship uh, at the end of the spring. That would be our ultimate goal. And again, focusing on what we do each day to achieve that. Our question from uh, Gina McNeil, a parent. I um, was wondering if the spring season happens, would fans be able to attend games? Uh, she mentions you're super fans. So, I mean... <laughs> Coach, I'll let you go, and if I can certainly assist in that if you like as well. Yeah, I haven't heard anything uh, about attendance yet. Um, I know, obviously, in the past, every game had been live streamed through any 10 now. So, you know, I think that's more Doug's area of expertise in terms of the, the live streaming and the video. And then I think you know, a lot of it depends on the institution's comfort level. If we're home and hosting, you know, with having – uh, visitors, guests, obviously our, you know, favorite visitors and guests are those that are fans of Stonehill women's soccer. So if it were up to me, which it isn't, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, we'd obviously, you know, love to be surrounded by those that are, you know, cheering for the purple and white, but um, I think time will have to, to tell for that unless Doug can provide any more insight. 
No, I think you said it best. And I just think it's going to just come down to institutional and not just Stonehill, but, you know, all the any 10 members um, individually and, you know, local and state and national guidelines are going to dictate what happens. And, you know, I guess thanks for the plug for any 10 now, but, you know, <laughs> if, you know, attendance is limited in any capacity, you know, those games will be presented online for viewing as, as much as possible. Um, you know, I think that's kind of what the league's trying to do with the schedule is build it out so that, you know, it's kind of spread out over the whole, whole semester with all the sports. So um, with an eye towards being able to offer those if, you know, we are, we are able, are not able to have as many fans as we normally have um, watching the games. So um, from Coach Trisha Brown, is your daughter on the recruit list yet? You know, I think she's a lefty. So, uh, um, Trish, we you know we do have a basketball hoop in our uh, playroom, and she can dunk. So I'm just saying, she's in the 99th percentile for height for a two-year-old. So just you wait. <laughs> I'll be ready for. <laughs> awesome. Any other questions from the from the group? Kate Walsh is off, offering two recruits in a few years as well, coach. So, if they're anything like Kate, I'll take them. <laughs> I guess if there aren't any more questions, uh, we can wrap up today. I do want to just say this is our second uh, this semester. We have a number of coffee with the coaches programs coming up next Friday. Uh, we'll, we'll be uh, Karen Bowen from Men's Women's Cross Country Track and Field. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we have two more in November, November 13th, Jim Reddish from Men's Soccer and Coach Trisha Brown, uh, November 20th. Um, and then in December, December 4th, Chris Krause from Men's Basketball and December 18th, David Borges from Men's Ice Hockey. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll also look to, you know, add some more next semester, um, assuming these all go as well as they have so far. Um, but, um, without any more questions, I think I'd like to just turn it over to Jen. If there's any messages from alumni and development, that'd be great. Yes. Thank you. This was wonderful. And thank you all for the questions. Also, I'm really happy, especially for the alums in the room to announce that we are going to have a full slate of programming for stay at homecoming. It's going to run from November 5th to the 8th and keep an eye on your email inbox uh, early next week for some information about that. But there's some programs that you definitely don't wanna miss, including an athletics panel. So thank you all for coming today. Doug, thank you for moderating. Coach, thank you for answering questions. Tess, thank you for cleaning your room <laughs> and for being here with <laughs> us. And um, I think that's about it. And uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks everyone, take care. Thank you. Thank you.